Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Incognita. This is the new alpha build uh, of the upcoming game from Clay Entertainment. You may know them from their work on Mark of the Ninja, also Don't Starve, as well as Shank, Shank 2, and Eats, which is the only Clay game I think I've never played. Clay, one of my favorite studios, obviously, I think I've gushed with praise over a lot of their games. Uh, Mark of the Ninja in particular, I think, is one of the best indie games maybe ever made. Uh, Don't Starve didn't really tickle my fancy as much, but I appreciated it for what it was. And I'm really excited for Incognita, because what Incognita was, and or what it is, or is going to be, I guess, uh, is a stealth focused squad based turn based strategy game so those are a lot of words and hyphenated kind of hyperbole to throw at you XCOM but stealthy and with objectives rather than simply killing all the aliens every single time we're not even fighting aliens we're playing as uh, the agency and we're essentially infiltrating the corporation and I'm not really sure how much deeper the narrative goes than that uh, this is available currently in its alpha state it is $17 for just the game, actually you get the game as well as a, uh, a gift copy that you can give to a friend, or you can split it with your friend and pay $8.50 each, which is what Omarecker and I did in order to get these copies. Uh, there's Steam codes, so the game actually is going to come out on Steam, or you can pay $20 for two copies plus two soundtracks. Soundtrack sounds a lot like TF2 so far, but you know. Anyway, we're going to get started. I'm going to go to new game. Um, there's no, this is the most glaring kind of omission in the game so far. There's no real story mode, so to speak. There's, it's basically kind of like a proof of concept in its current state. Uh, what it is, you know, procedurally generated environments every single time, but we have the same two characters, although there will be one that we can rescue, and it is class-based as well. So you know how XCOM had, like, a sniper and a heavy and an assault, etc., etc. Uh, here we have, uh, an engineer, and, I uh, we also have Murphy, who might be called a stealth character, or maybe he's just an all-around or something, because, uh, as you can see, Slate is an engineer. I can't really see what, uh, what Murphy is here, but anyway. Um, our objective, it, it works kind of differently than a, a game like XCOM, which is its closest kind of superficial uh, resembler, if that makes any sense, but uh, it, it has its own kind of unique flavor as well. The most important thing to talk about is this alarm thing up here. So every single turn, that alarm will tick up by one point by default. No matter what you do, it'll tick up by one point. When it gets to 20, a team of really, really hard enemies will come and probably ruin your day. So our objective is basically to get to the exit of the level and leave before 20 turns are up. But it's not necessarily 20 turns because other things will give this more points or cause it to grow faster. If we get spotted by cameras, it'll grow faster. If uh, enemies' heart rate monitors stop, it'll go up by one. Uh, so, you know, you have to be stealthy in order to avoid getting hit by either, you know, technological surveillance or surveillance from other people, or you can just go head on uh, and hit people. But in any case, uh, it's very, very simple if you have played a game like uh, XCOM to get started here. So, you know, you click on your character, they have a certain number of action points, which I believe is represented by that kind of blue meter, and the red meter below that, I believe, is their health. Uh, notice that the engineer's health is white. I think that maybe is because he's a robot or something. Maybe it represents some kind of mechanical skill. I don't know. Uh, so we'll just move um, Murphy, our human, over here. And by moving him over here, he can actually hijack a console. So if we hijack this console, you can see that this gives us one computer point when it actually finishes. This is another kind of cool aspect of the game. If I go into the mainframe here, uh, this is a totally different viewpoint that kind of shows us the electronic infrastructure of the building that we're in, at least in as far as we can see. Um, Hacking terminals essentially gives us action points to use in this mainframe mode that later we'll be able to use to hack servers and find out where security cameras are located uh, or we can use it to open locked doors or, you know, disable uh, security like, you know, laser tripwire and stuff like that. Um, it's really cool. It's, it's totally interesting. I've never seen anything like this before. It almost reminds me a little bit of Gunpoint, but it's, it's very superficial. The puzzles don't feel the same as Gunpoint. It's just maybe a useful point of reference. So we are just going to have, we had them all uh, hack terminals, which uh, took their green diamond here, which I believe is their uh, kind of like action for that turn, if that makes sense. They can shoot, they can reload, or they can actively hack something, etc, etc. Um, apologies for not knowing all of the basic fundamentals, but again, there is no tutorial mode, at least as far as I know. The game basically just throws you in here. So like XCOM, once your turn is over, you uh, simply hit next turn, and then the enemy will have their turn, and we obviously cannot see what they're doing. Uh, what we will do is come over here and we will open this door up and we'll see if we can see something inside. Uh, not as of yet. Now this is actually, uh, I want to point out, one of my least favorite parts of Incognita so far, at least in its current build, and keep in mind that this is a work in progress, is that it's just a little janky. Like, the, the camera doesn't pan all of the time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it simply refuses to. 
which is really frustrating. Maybe if I hit escape, I can pan with it. Okay, so when you're selected on a character, you can't pan the camera. I That decision baffles my mind, because in XCOM, obviously, panning the camera is super important, and you can pan when you still have a character selected. Maybe it's just to make sure you don't accidentally uh, lose your character, but it does make for kind of a frustrating experience, uh, because you're constantly deselecting your character to pan. Actually, no, now I've... I think I've deselected my character, but I still can't pan. So yeah, there's some weird camera issues. You know, it's not perfect in its current state by any... There's also some janky animations as well. I'm just going to spoil it right off the top here. Uh, let's put our guys in Overwatch, and I'll, I'll talk about it when we're on the enemy turn here. Uh, but I don't think Incognita is a game that you should probably pick up in its current state. That's not to say that I think it's going to be bad. It's actually got a great infrastructure in place. But uh, in, in its current state, given that there's no real kind of story or campaign or series of missions... Uh, it, it's just a little shallow, and that combined with the fact, uh, that it is, uh, a little buggy, or at least, you know, the, the it, controls don't totally feel right, especially on the camera, which is, uh, kind of a killer in a game like this. Uh, it means that I think you should take more of a wait-and-see approach to this. I understand why Clay would want to release the game, get some feedback from a, a wide number of players, and, you know, let people access a game if they're interested in it. Uh, I, I don't think if you're on the fence, it's something you should pick up right away. The, the positive side to picking it up straight away, obviously is that you can get it uh, for much cheaper than you'll be able to get it when it's actually out. I assume once it actually comes out, it's going to be like 15 bucks probably. Uh, Clay has kind of a, a history of releasing games at that price point, so it would not surprise me. Please tell me. Nope, can't pan the camera. Uh, there's our exit, by the way, over here. Uh, and, you know, it's another thing, like, I've been playing so many Paradox games that I'm used to using, like, WASD to pan the camera, which just seems smart to me, uh, because, you know, your right hand's gonna be on the mouse, your left hand is gonna be on WASD, uh, but even the arrow keys, they usually pan, but they won't pan here. I apologize if that seems like a rel relatively minor complaint. I assure you, uh, that it is not. It is, uh, something that you will notice is a huge usability issue as you play the game. Uh, so I'm just gonna like walk in here with my guy. I haven't encountered any enemies yet, but we will. Please tell me there's none in here. Okay, good. There's actually some terminals that we can hack in here. Uh, and we can... Maybe. I believe this is a credit safe. Okay, so now we have three computer points. We can demonstrate kind of the cool stuff about the mainframe. So there are uh, three or four kind of mainframe elements that I've seen so far. There's terminals, which you have to hijack in the quote-unquote like real world. Uh, there's credit safes. Uh, there's servers, and then there are kind of laser prisons, if that makes sense. You know, picture a prison cell, but it's got lasers for bars instead of uh, actual iron. Each one of these things has kind of a number of computer points associated with it that you need to break down in order to take down the defenses. So in order to break down this credit safe and make it possible for us to open it, we need to use three computer points. We have three computer points. This is based on the number of terminals that we've hacked. Remember, you can only hack one terminal per turn. Uh, but there we go. So we've hacked that credit safe. And then if we go back into our real world, uh, I, I probably can't do it yet. Oh, I can. Okay, so we can steal what is inside of the credit safe here. And not, I really like this as well. Not only is it, you know, it's got that XCOM kind of element to it, but there are kind of decisions that you can make as well, almost in the same style as an FTL. So it says, behind the money, there appears to be a sizable stack of discs in the safe, but they're hidden behind several locks. Uh, try to get the locks, or try to get the discs by shooting the locks or close the safe. Uh, let's get interesting. Normally, I would probably close the safe because this will probably attract guards when I shoot the locks, but let's see if this works. Murphy shoots through the locks, burning all of the ammon in his weapon. I'm not sure if that's a deliberate type or what. Cool, we've gotten a data disc there. Uh, and also 200 credits, which effectively uh, has no use for us uh, right now because there's no place to spend it, really. Basically, you're just... Imagine the demo of XCOM Enemy Unknown. That's essentially what you're dealing with here. This is uh, very much a, a demo version of the game, uh, which again is why, you know, maybe $17 is not necessarily the... Or not necessarily what you want to pay for it. Maybe even 850 isn't what you want to pay for it. I don't know. It's a personal preference thing. It looks interesting for sure. Oh, we have uh, tripped off an enemy, I think. Oh, I totally should have hacked that terminal. That was stupid. Um, but yeah, I believe there's an enemy who has discovered us now. But we'll see once we get into this next room. Please, God, let me pan the camera to see what's going on inside of here. Okay, that's a problem. Um, I see a locked door here. We need a, actually a passcode to uh, get into that one. So I'll just put my guy in Overwatch and we will see if this is going to work out. But yeah, what I was going to say is that it's, it's personal preference, you know. You, you're essentially probably getting the game for half off right now, but that, that comes at a cost. And the cost is, uh, you know, right now it's not necessarily the best product. It's certainly not the, the best strategy game uh, that I've ever played, mostly due to some kind of technical foibles that uh, I'm dealing with thus far. That being said, uh, it has the potential to be really awesome, so I guess it's just a matter of whether you'd uh, rather risk, say, or like risk your money 
and possibly like win big. It's a, a gamble, I guess, to stop being so heavy-handed with this analogy. Or if you're uh, okay just waiting and seeing and you know making sure that uh, your money is going to be well spent. Because as of right now, you know it, it's it's a cool beta, but there's just a uh, cool alpha. Sorry, but there's just uh, too many weird issues to kind of make it that much fun to play. Okay, so we are uh, we can hack into this database here, and this is what I mean. You know, there's a lot of cool ideas in Incognita. I really like this uh, kind of underlying layer of being able to go into the technological infrastructure of a building, and then it's it's almost like a little Deus Exe, if you know what I mean. And uh, then we can. By hacking into the camera database, we can now see all of the security cameras on the floor. And if I could pan my camera over here, I guess I'll just zoom all the way out. Uh, I can use my other uh, points, my other computer points for this turn, to hack into these cameras. And then I can actually see what's going on over here, which is cool. So, I need to find a passcode in order to get into this door. Oh, and there's the, or sorry, pass card, not passcode. And there is the uh, pass card right there. Beautiful. So, we'll have uh, this guy come over here. We haven't encountered any enemies yet. Believe me when I say this is abnormal. Uh, normally we would have encountered some dudes by this point in the game, but uh, we'll put our guys into Overwatch and then start the next turn. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to escape over, over the course of this mission. There is a kind of a sub-objective. Okay, so we can start to see some enemies here. There is kind of a sub-objective, uh, which is there is a, um, a member of our party who is... Please work with me here. Um, there is a member of our party... Also, I, I try, but the mouse wheel won't pan either. Have I already hacked this? Maybe not? Okay, well, there's uh, another credit safe in here. Anyway, um, there's another sub-objective, which is we have a... Uh, one of our team members is locked in here, and we can rescue him, and then he'll become a party member. And as far as I know, it is, you know, it's, it's got permadeath like uh, XCOM does. Uh, we'll open the door here. And there's an enemy right there. Um, I wonder if I can shoot him from here. What are our odds of hitting? So, you know, I, again, I, I apologize for the ever-present XCOM kind of comparisons here, but uh, we can mouse over him and see what our odds are. So, this guy has a dart gun. This is just a tranquilizer. It will only knock him out. This has benefits, but also disadvantages. The benefit is that uh, it won't stop his heart rate meter, so the alarm won't grow any higher. The downside is that he will come back to life, so I'll probably double tap him with my engineer who has a, a real pistol that can end his life. Um, combat a little janky as well, actually, but anyway, let's use our dart gun for now. We can see that we have a 100% chance to hit. That'll take him out, and then, uh, we should be able to sneak inside of the room just a little bit here. Please tell me that I'm not gonna get discovered by a camera. So oh, no! Um, okay. This guy is gonna die. There's no question about that. And there's our, uh, our sharpshooter, by the way. I wonder if I can use my computer points to hack into these lasers and then maybe turn them off. Yeah, okay, good. So then I can rescue him on the next turn. But for now, uh, this guy's going to have some serious problems. By the way, uh, I totally could have predicted that because each one of your characters does have a special ability. For example, our engineer has this wireless emitter. If I drop this down, this will allow us to access consoles wirelessly, which is cool. Uh, but it will also allow us to just see any kind of electronic devices in the area. Very important. I really should have used that before I sent this guy running in. Also, Murphy has the ability to crack safes uh, easily. He also has an inventory. Adrenaline dose removes your injuries, but uh, you use this basically to revive if you've been uh, knocked out. So, uh, can I shoot one of these guys? I don't think I have vision on anybody, so we're just gonna have to go to the next turn. I am probably gonna get Murphy killed here. He only has two health, so one hit will... Oh my god, they just ran away. Apologies for that sound, by the way. I bumped my desk with my knee there. Um, why he just ran away is beyond me, but that will allow me to get uh, this party member here. You can see that our exit's pretty close. I might actually be able to succeed on this mission, which would be rare, uh, given my history. So let's uh, have this guy come over here. And as long as he is close to him, he should be able to rescue the other guy. Good! So we have rescued a sharpshooter now. He's basically going to be our high damage unit. In fact, I'm going to use him straight away, just to murder the man that was on the ground. Um, he's now knocked out a little bit longer. Actually, he's not even dead, uh, but he's, he's certainly very close. Now, do we see that other guard? We do not, so we might as well just shoot this guy. Now he's dead, and in two turns, his heart rate monitor will stop, and the alarm will start to grow uh, a little bit faster. So let's uh, make sure everybody's on Overwatch, if they can be. Uh, I'm not sure what his ability is. He, he is a very good accuracy, I guess. Um, sure, we're on Overwatch, Overwatch. Next turn. One uh, big difference between this and Enemy Unknown is that uh, reloading does cost the same as shooting. Which is to say that if you've already shot on a turn, you can't also reload. Wait, was that the same in Enemy Unknown? It might have been the same in Enemy Unknown. I can't remember. 
but it, it's suffice it to say, reloading, I guess, doesn't cost less action points. Uh, seriously, I can't complain enough. I, I can't stress enough, I guess I should say, that the number one complaint I have about this game so far is the super wonky camera controls. I am not playing this up uh, for effect. I am very much trying to uh, put the camera on top of my characters, but it is a, a problem so far. And the, it's the major problem with the game. This and the fact that, you know, it's basically just a demo, which I can't really fault the game for. It's in alpha, you know, I, I have some leniency for that, obviously, um, but it, it is frustrating. I really thought that that man was... Is there no way for me to get into this other room? Like, I, I wanted to... Uh... Alright, we'll hijack that console through the wall. Um, but I guess I have to come over here and then walk downwards in order to get uh, where I want to go here. Which is a little bit scary, in all honesty. Because it's going to take me forever. But is there anything we can do with our mainframe right now? I guess I can hack into uh, some credit safes. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be in this area, but we might as well use some of our points for something. But yeah, it's, it's mostly like camera woes that cause me to not really be uh, having the greatest time with this so far. Although, like I said, you know, this is not a definitive look at the game by any stretch of the imagination. It's an alpha build. Uh, but this is my way of saying, you know, buyer beware in its current kind of... Uh, release but uh, I, I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on this for when it comes out it's, it's totally my kind of game uh, and and I'm excited to see where it goes from this because I think there's a lot of really good ideas it just needs a lot of polish right now graphically musically fantastic interacting with the game sometimes needs some work um, we will shoot this man usually we have a really high percentage oh, only 50% I will admit the other problem I guess so far is that I've normally only seen two percentages for hitting someone and that's like 150 oh my god that hit cover um, well, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll get over here, and we should be able to have a 100% chance to at least stun him, there we go. Uh, the engineer, I should point out, also has the ability to sneak, which basically allows him to move quietly so people won't discover him, uh, but it costs... He's still not dead. Um, but it costs twice as many movement points, uh, per turn. Which means you, obviously, when you're sneaking, you move a lot less, or a lot more slowly. Um, this guy has to be executed, so I'll, I'll shoot him. And then we'll continue moving onwards here. You can see that time is uh, kind of at a premium. Just want to move into this room and see. There is a, apparently a way for us to get to the exit. Oh, maybe there isn't. Oh, yes, we just walk through here and then out here. I gotcha. Okay. So we're not going to worry too much about the, the credit safes and, and whatnot. Sometimes they have money. Sometimes they have items uh, that can be useful. Uh, but for now, we just want to get the hell out of here because uh, this guy's heart rate monitor is going to stop, which should cause the alarm to go a little higher. Oh, no, maybe next turn, when when, he, when the heart ticks down to zero, or the... Oh, I can pan the camera again. Uh, when the uh, health ticks down to zero. So we're going to send Murphy in here, and then Slate in here, and we will probably... This is how all of my missions have gone in Incognita. Uh, we'll probably be, like, right at the borderline of being at the exit, right when round 20 hits. Now, there's the heart rate monitor that has caused it to go up by one. Then it automatically scans and goes up by one anyway. It's going to be close. Uh, I, I hope we can make it, but I'm not totally sure if we will be able to. Um, let's come over here and open this door. Okay, so this, I, I think that we're just free to go to the exit, basically. It doesn't appear like there's any enemies in here. It's just a matter of whether or not we'll be able to get on the space before the enforcers come. We should still probably be able to get away. And again, I, I don't think I finished this thought earlier. It was a little half-baked. Uh, but I do believe that it works on the same kind of principle as, you know... For example, maybe you're thinking of an XCOM right now, where if a character dies, they're gone forever, I believe at least, or a Fire Emblem might be another comparison you can make to stop making the, the same one over and over. Um, because I have, you know, there, there is a continue game function, which basically just puts you on another mission. Uh, but if you, oh, that was silly of me. Uh, but if you lose uh, one of your players, like let's say I, you lose Murphy, who I almost always do, uh, then you just start the mission without him and you have the other people. Okay, so for one move, we can now extract and this will take us out of here like so okay so we completed the mission we got uh two discs and 200 money mission complete congratulations your team got out exit level summary and that's basically all there is to talk about about incognito so far very cool proof of concept chock full of good ideas mainframe stuff is ingenious audio visual fantastic 
just a little frustrating to play as a result of camera woes and uh, some janky animations that we didn't really get a chance to see here. There will be a link to uh, pre-order and get early access to the game. Uh, you can get the build that I'm playing right now uh, at the link in the video description below. Again, you're basically getting it at half price as long as you split it with a friend. $17 for two copies of the game, $20 for two copies of the game with the soundtracks. Uh, I wouldn't recommend if you're on the fence picking it up right now. I think you're, if you're trying to be prudent, wait until it comes out and make sure all of these issues that currently exist in the game uh, are settled and see how it actually shakes up long term see how the campaign actually works uh, if there's any kind of I don't know, cool gameplay elements that come out uh, outside of the missions themselves, you know, XCOM building the facility from the ground up, etc, etc, research, technology, engineering I hope that at least some of this stuff exists in the final version of the game. As of right now, very, very cool ideas, uh, but it's just not quite at the point where it's a totally fun experience to play. Definitely one of those things that needs a little bit of polish before uh, I'm going to be comfortable giving it a hearty recommendation. But, again, there's a, a little while yet until it actually comes out. This is an alpha build, so there's lots of work yet to be done. As always, thanks for watching. Again, link in the video description below if you want to pre-order it uh, with a friend for basically half price. But, for most of you, I would recommend waiting for now. Again, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, I encourage you to leave a form of support in the form of a like or a civil comment telling me what you liked or did not like about the video and if you want to see more first impressions videos of new and upcoming indie games and other games feel free to subscribe thanks a lot and i will see you next time